her regrets. She's at GCU doing some kind of event for Jerry Colangelo. And I have this wonderful man and his new bride with me, Stephen Hawkhouse and his wife, Patty. Welcome to our show. Thank you, thank you. Stephen has come to me, gee, Stephen, when was that? Well, it would have been in 2011. Okay, in 2011, because his wife passed away. So he came to me for medium work. And over the years, he's come from time to time. In the beginning, when somebody has a loss, they come to see me pretty regularly just to kind of make that connection and, and get that, that real secure knowledge that their loved one is safe on the other side and that there's life after life. And his wife, Kathy, was just wonderful with absolutely giving signs and signals. And she spoke to me really lovely ways. And we, we got that connection. And then um, uh, what happened was he met this beautiful lady who also lost her husband. And they met because of the way that Patty's husband and Stephen's wife on the other side kind of coordinated things. So we're gonna to talk to them about that, but before we do, I just have a couple of quick announcements. On October 11th, guess what? James Von Prague is gonna be on this show. Won't that be fun? I can't wait. And you know that on November 17th and 18th, we will again be at Mona Lucia, so please jump on my website and get your tickets. And I'm also doing something with Healing Insights which is at the Embassy Suites in Paradise Valley. And I'm gonna be with Susan Grau doing a night of reading. Susan is a wonderful medium that lives in California. And then we have all kinds of doctors and people who are you know, professionals that understand healing and grief and loss. And so it's going to be a weekend where you can really get some healing. If you wanna get tickets for that, it's 1-855-894-5658. So that's all, oh, one more announcement. James and I are going to both be presenting our new books together on November 16th. Mine is on Karmic Profile. Of course, you know that. It's called Diary of a Mad Medium. And his book is on Spirit Guides. So, let's start by you saying to us how it came to be that you decided to come to me. Because so many things were happening in my home. When my wife Kathy died, she told me that she would reach me if she possibly could. And from that very afternoon of the day she died was when she started to make things happen within our house electrically. Mm -hmm. And it kept going on. So many different things from lights going on, ceiling fans turning on, doors opening. Things began to happen so often, even daily, that I knew that something was up. But then I started to question myself. Of course. Because, because you're never quite sure if it's your imagination, which is one of the reasons that we have a hard time talking to our own loved ones on the other side, because we're not sure whether that voice is something we've made up in our head, you know? And so that's why going to a medium helps, because I sometimes think I'm talking to my father, but actually, even though I do medium work, I'm not quite always sure. So, um, so you were, you know, really devastated. Your, your wife had cancer, and, and she, you know, and she, she was a great quickly, love of yours, and, and it, was, it was really hard for you, and you were, you were in a lot of pain and a lot of grief. It was end-of-life feeling for myself. Mm -hmm. There was no point in going on, and I actually went through a lot of different stages from wishing I could die to uh, just general depression. But I had to keep working because I needed to keep making a living. So I did, but everything just was just wrong. So we ended up, I ended up having all of these experiences within my house. And I, I was either sleepwalking and doing this, or it was really happening. And uh, I met some people who had lost their son, and they told me about their experience with you and at first, I didn't think anything. I even thought, oh, these poor people, they want, they, they need something to make themselves feel better. Mm -hmm. But after it kept going on, I decided, could I have her name? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I contacted you for that reason. And Kathy did a good job right from the get-go talking. Like She let us know right away Indeed. That, that it was her talking, gave me information I'd have no way of knowing, and, and let you know right away that she that was talking That was interesting. It didn't make the hair on the back of my neck stand up. It made my entire mind go numb. Mm -hmm. It was so uncanny. Mm -hmm. 
and it was real. Mm -hmm. and, and it never stopped. And later on, you participated in a book about men's grief. I did. I did a couple of books, but I co-published co and co-authored a book on grief through the eyes of men because during my course of grief, I found so little written for men. So much was written for women and grief generally, but not for men. And I was treated differently as a man. I could tell. And stereotypically, I felt like everybody else who perceived me, that you're a man, you can deal with it. Because mm -hmm. men are supposed to suck it up and not show well, their in emotion. Well, in a way, they're supposed to be stronger and they don't cry. Mm -hmm. A lot of things go through your mind when you're going through this grief, like there must be something wrong with me. No, there was nothing wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just grieving. This is what a grieving person looks like. Right. If you want to ask Patty and Stephen questions, please call us at 602-875-0444. Now, Patty, we, we just met because yes. of Stephen. Right. And my recollection is, and you know, I, I do a lot of readings, but my recollection is that Stephen brought you in, and when he did, your husband spoke yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. And so how did your husband pass away? My husband passed very quickly as well. He, was, he, uh, he passed a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and it was melanoma, and he got sick at Christmas, and he was gone by the middle to end of February. Mm -hmm. So it was about less than two months. And it was uh, metastatic melanoma, so it had gone to his brain and his lungs. So I was, we were living on Maui. We had a business together, Maui Pasta Company, and we had just launched the retail part of our business nine months prior. And all of a sudden, my husband's in hospice and I have a business to run on my own. And so there was a lot of chaos going on during that period. And I absolutely believed he was not going to pass away. I absolutely believed that we were going to beat it, we were going to fix it, we were going to give him the kind of alternative medicines he needed to survive. And when he didn't, I also started getting signs immediately, starting 19 minutes after he died. <laughs> wow, what, what was the first sign? The sign was, I was in the room and I was alone with him, and my phone, which I was nowhere near, it was across the room, the alarm started going off. Exactly 19 minutes. Nine is a very important number to both of us. We were married on the 19th, my birthday is the 9th, his is the 29th. So nine is a very important um, number for us. Mm -hmm. And the alarm just started going off. And here I'm like, what's going on? I'm over here with him and my alarm was over there. And within a couple of days, songs were playing by themselves from his mode of connecting with me was always my cell phone. Mm -hmm. we, had in, we were very involved with our cell phones, so mm -hmm. it made sense. Um, and so I tried and tried to keep the business going, and I reached out to an online grief support group, which Steve was part of. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we met online. And when I went there, it was about a month into my grief, and I said, I'm trying to run a business by myself in the middle of this grief. I can't let this business go. It was our dream. It was his dream. It was both of our dreams. And um, Steve and a couple of other people, too, had been in the same situation where they were in business with their spouses and they passed. Um, but that was a real connection for us to begin with, even though we were just acquaintances on a computer screen, you know, on a, on a message board. Mm -hmm. and. Um, so that's how we started to um, get, get to get know, to know each, each other. other. Right. So suffice it to say, you guys, that you had pretty strong spouses, that their energy was strong enough to immediately contact you guys, that they were pretty s strong people. That would be an understatement. Yeah. And, uh, but I find it interesting because oftentimes when I talk to people, they miss signs and signals. And they do that because the grief is so all-encompassing that they are in denial about the signs or signals or they don't see them or even when they're presented with them, there's some level of give me more, give me more, give me more, I need proof, I need proof, I need proof. And I wondered if you went through some of that give me more, I need proof or whether you were satisfied with the messages that you were getting. 
I was afraid it was going to end because Kathy would be very present for as much as five days to a week of several events happening. Then all of a sudden there was nothing. And then weeks later she would be back in again doing it. And sometimes when I really needed to tell her something or I would speak something to her, one occasion specifically when I asked her a question, the light in that room on the ceiling fan over my head turned on. So I knew she was hearing me, but I didn't understand what she was saying. Part of that was frustrating, but I didn't want to tempt it. I didn't want to judge it. I didn't want to ask for anything. I felt it was a very delicate thing that I might scare away or cause to end. It's interesting that you would say that. I was in Minnesota in Bemidji and I was doing some readings for a group of people and one of the people told me that she happened to mention that she saw a medium to her priest. Now I've had priests and nuns come to me for work to, to connect with their own loved ones, but this particular priest was old fashioned enough to say to her, you don't want to go there because it might disrupt them or scare them away or, you know, somehow, you know, make it so... It, you're not making a connection or something. And she said, is that possible? Of course, it's not possible. Of course, Kathy was probably doing some of her own work on the other side those times when you didn't have that ongoing presence because as we have talked to spirit over the years, we find out that when you're on the other side, you kind of look at your karmic profile, understand who you were in this lifetime, you know, what you want to do next. But love never and I find it um, wonderful that you guys have been able to find each other because a lot of times um, if a widow is with somebody or a widow is with somebody and they haven't shared that experience, it's almost like they compete with a ghost. Do you understand what I mean? And you guys haven't had to have that in, as part of your, of your connection with each other because you're free to talk about your spouses with each other without judgment. Would that well, we kind of feel like it's the four of us. Okay. We do. <laughs> Can you tell me about that? Like, how is it the four of you, Pat? Um, it's, they seem to, especially as we were meeting, like um, Steve had dreams with Ron in it, and I've gotten messages from Ron and from Kathy about our relationship and that it's right and to keep moving forward and we just keep hearing the messages and they're always part of us. Our, our wedding rings are the wings, rings from our previous marriage with little adjustments for each other. Mm -hmm. So the rings are from our previous marriage and this marriage. So they're part of our everyday life. They're, we have pieces of them we have earned and we have pieces of um, the eternal reef that I made for Ron. Ron is in the water in Maui in an eternal reef, but I have a piece of that, and they're together in our room, and we talk about them all the time, and we feel messages from them all the time. That's that's yeah. such a gift. I yeah. mean, really a gift. Because I, I, you know, I have to tell you that, that I think, especially with widowers, because um, women um, <laughs> are always looking for a good man at a certain age if they're single, they kind of circle around a widower and try to you know, make a connection, and I, I think Stephen might have felt some of that here and there at the, at, at the beginning when, you know, people were trying to help him with the process, and much better to have someone help him with the process that understands it, right? Mm -hmm. So, you shared a little bit of a story uh, with me before the camera came on about uh, Kathy and Ron and you coming in, and uh, can you share that story with our, with our viewers? With the original time mm -hmm. because what if, if I'm remembering correctly there were there were things that I was feeling about Ron who I had never met mm -hmm. and he was trying to tell me something mm -hmm. and I was having dreams of him not knowing what he I had never seen his face photographs but never saw his face and in my dreams I never saw his face but I knew the man with me was him and I felt his presence many, many times, even when I was outside. I felt him up there in the stars. I felt things I had never felt before, which was unusual. Mm -hmm. um, Kathy stepped away 
and Ron stepped into my being able to hear something from the other side, if you will. Mm -hmm. When that started happening, I, I knew that that there was more to it. It was bigger than us. Mm -hmm. I knew that this whole thing was was a bigger force than we could comprehend. Mm -hmm. So do you believe in the karma of it, you guys? Do you think that the four of your souls had this agreement that eventually that they would leave and that you two would come together in this lifetime? Is that part of the contract you have with your souls? I, I feel differently myself. I feel like we were all four connected sometime in a previous life. Mm -hmm. right? yeah, I really I felt that. that we may have been with different parts of each other, that I may have been with Patty before, that I may have maybe been with Ron before, mm -hmm. that I had a strong feeling that sometime in my past I had been a woman. Mm -hmm. and that somehow we were all connected more than once mm -hmm. and we moved along interacting with each other at different times over many periods of time. I don't know why, mm -hmm. I just feel it and I can't explain it. You know, that, that sense of inner knowingness that is so spiritual. You know, only an old soul knows that inner knowingness, you know what I mean? like to have that ability to filter that through and know at your core level that this was meant to be even through the loss of, of your spouses and they too were on board with how it was going to manifest in this lifetime and it gives you the knowledge that there certainly is you know lifetimes that you you know move in and out with the same soul group and so they're obviously part of each other's soul group as well so when they both got to the other side is it possible that you guys think that you know Kathy left first then Ron right yes is it possible that Kathy then knew Ron said hey <laughs> you know we've got this agreement over here we got to coordinate this thing down down there we got to make sure these two people get together we've, you know? we've talked of this this is very likely I, I do know that there's a big connection with Maui really big connection because you guys loved you and Kathy loved Hawaii it, before I had never been home. there until I had gone there with her uh -huh. one year before she died okay so I had no idea of what it was but she loved Maui and had been there seven times before mm -hmm. and both Maui and Kauai were where she would love to be mm -hmm. and I know that there's a connection and I know that when I went to on my anniversary my wedding anniversary before I met Patty I was in Maui Ron would have still been alive. Mm, that's but so interesting. I so, yeah. I so felt Kathy's presence there. Were you I in mean, the same town driving that they by lived it, in? Driving by oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I drove by. We, we were drove close back. proximity, yeah. but and maybe we might have even seen each other without even knowing. I know. Isn't that stuff that movies are made <laughs> on? Isn't it great? Guys? It's great. But nonetheless, you don't know. And but Ron you, moved to Maui, passionate for Maui as well. Mm -hmm. I moved to Maui sight unseen. 23 years ago because I had to be there and Ron was so happy to meet me because he always wanted to live on Maui. Yeah. We had met online. Yeah. So there is a really strong connection with Maui. And you're from the East Coast. I'm from the East Coast. And Ron was also? California. He was a California yes, boy. Ah. Yes. And how did you and Ron meet? Online. E-Harmony. Oh, very good. <laughs> Everybody, E-Harmony. <laughs> um, so, uh, you were married for... I was married for almost 10 years. Almost 10 years. Okay. Almost. We didn't quite make 10 years. And you were married for... Um, I was married for almost 14. Almost 14. But there's something that I'd like to say right now, because Patty and Ron's relationship was so intense and so perfect, and so was Kathy and mine. It was so incredible because I had been married before, Patty had been married before. We had lived a life where we thought we knew love, but not until we met them. And it was a deep love that was like nothing I had ever known before. And so that's why her loss was so hard to deal with and accept because I had found happiness true like love. I had never known. Mm -hmm. It was more than just true love. It was like everything became right in the world and when she left it was so devastating for me and when I know that Patty from our discussions was very similar 
And the point I'm trying to make is, is that when we did connect with each other, we were able to take it to another level. Kathy and Ron taught us how to love. We took it to another level. We love them dearly, and we will never stop. But what we're feeling between each other is dramatic. It's awesome. And it doesn't end. It keeps getting deeper, and we have an awareness. And the beauty of it is we can talk with each other. We can speak about Ron and Kathy to each other. We can talk about when it hurts. We can talk about how wonderful they were and still are in our lives. It, on that great. note, question comes to me. Do you think that the level of your relationship at this depth is because the loss of the people that you love so much and felt so perfect with enlightened you more so that you come together in a state of enlightenment that you didn't before? Absolutely. I think our, I had never experienced such a powerful and all-encompassing love that I had with Ron. It was so intense and so wonderful and so joyful. And then the grief, of course, was equally as intense. And then as we found our love, it's like everything multiplied and everything could be even more intense. That's kind of what he was saying. Everything could be even, it's even stronger now. And we didn't think that was possible. I mean, there's an age difference for, there's all this stuff. And I moved, I moved from Maui here and yet it's all right. I know everything will always be all right because I'm so deeply in love and so happy. And it's confusing at times because I still miss and love Ron so much. It must be confusing at yeah. times. I get that. Yeah, it's, it still is. It's like, but I think about life between lives and them and what the goal is. And the goal, as I see it, for our all of the lives that we live is to continue to grow and continue to love and to perfect love. And so I know that everything that happened and our losses of them um, only served to help us grow and be better and know how to love and know how to share love more and that we will all be together again and apart again and together again and you know like it's beautiful knowledge to have it's incredible insight it's it's high spirituality it's it's being at a place or a level of vibrational frequency that we are all trying to attain while we're here on the planet, that feeling of unconditional love. And I mean, you know. It's not all the time. I was going right? to say that It's too. not all the time. It's like I have to remember that. Right? In fact, when I, when I get into a, a very strong, depressed, grief kind of space about something about everything, the loss and all of the complications of everything, I've asked Steve. Remind me. Remind me of what I believe in. Remind me that they're there and they're here because sometimes you get so lost you can't remember it. Mm -hmm. But it's never gone. It's just, and as soon as I am reminded or I can remind myself, I feel better because I know it's okay. I don't have to, like, um, grieve so deeply about everything they didn't have, Kathy and Ron didn't have, and what we sh what should have been because what should have been is what happened. And even though it's hard to see in our earthly and daily lives, it is. And I can kind of, it kind of gives me a peace towards a lot of things, whatever is going to unfold in our, in our lives. Like I, I don't feel a lot of anxiety about the future because so much has unfolded. I was very, I, I never believed in afterlife. There, I wasn't very religious anymore. I had grown up Catholic. And after Ron passed, I was obsessed with reading everything I could about life between lives and spirit, and spirituality and soul groups and all of that. Mm -hmm. I was obsessed with it. It took up my every second when I wasn't working. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of a soul agreement between people uh, when there's a loss that the agreement is that somebody needs to allow the other person to enlighten themselves, to start reading, to start getting, mm -hmm. you know, that one person's working on this side and one person's working on this mm -hmm. side, and together they're, they, they fulfilled some kind of a, a karmic agreement that, that that growth would happen. And it's only people that stay 
victim to their loss that don't get that piece of enlightenment, even when it is, you said your friends lost a child, even as devastating as it is to lose a child, sometimes in that loss, I've seen time and time again, people work at understanding life after life and enlightenment and moving into a different direction, that depth of, of understanding that you just shared with us and the, you know, that deep abiding faith that the soul goes on, you know, which of course you'll have doubts at times, but it's ever present and it's right. kind of understanding what that all means. So the first time you actually, the, my, I guess I'm, what I'm getting from you guys is that you spent some time talking via phone and on, online before you actually met each other then, yeah? Yes. Most definitely. Yeah. And so the first time that you met each other, what was that like? And I mean, when you were talking on the on the phone and on the internet, did you have those feelings like, whoa, what's happening? Is this person resonating with me? Or We never spoke on the phone before we met. Oh, okay. Maybe in the, the airport, all, but all, we were trying to find email. out where each other was. But okay. it, was a, it was not email. It was on the grief support website that we both belong to, uh, okay. which when I first joined after Kathy died was part of Hospice of the Valley. And uh, I stayed with them. They saved my life. The lady that runs it is brilliant. And she really helped me with tools, support, direction. I stayed with it. And there was a time when Hospice of the Valley, because of the Affordable Care Act, lost funding because Medicare no longer would cover hospice care. Mm -hmm big blow financially. Mm -hmm. What happened was is that they had to cut the website loose. And so now we needed to, to try to keep it up by donating to the website. And that's when I came up with this idea that we could have an art auction with all of my friends in the art industry and galleries and artists. We'd put together an art auction. Everybody give me their artwork. I'd frame it. Mm -hmm. You know, and we had moment. 80 pieces. And Kathy. Gave that idea she to you. did. She gave me that idea while I was sleeping. I woke up and I knew she had given me this idea to do this. I asked anybody on the website who did art. Maybe they would like to contribute and help the cause. Mm -hmm. And Patty did. She put this painting on that I saw on the website and I was fascinated with it. It was something that you painted? Yes. Probably? Yes. It was called Shadow of Nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, <laughs> and it was a painting that uh, it was the only painting I've ever painted, and I painted it a decade ago, over a decade ago, that I had to paint. It came to me in my vision, and I knew exactly what it was, and it was a giant hibiscus flower with these eyes in, in shadow in the background, kind of looking over, looking out. And I had to paint it, and I didn't even know why I had to, but I did. And I was like, that's where it has to go. That painting has to she go. She sent me the painting, other people did too, and we had 80 paintings and pieces of artwork in the show. And when I saw that before she sent it to me, I, I knew I had to have this painting. I needed to have this painting. I was going to buy it mm -hmm. from the show. I it, didn't care it, what it, anybody it, did. It kicked you somewhere. Like it, it did. It and and I, once I received the painting, I asked her if I could have G. Clay's made of it so I could get a copy of it. Then I could have one that was a print on canvas and that would be mine. And I said to her, I said, one day you'll get this back. Yeah. Now it's still hanging in our house <laughs> and she has it back. And it's beautiful. It's a great story. But that's how we met was at this art auction, art auction which was September 30th, when I met her, the art auction was October 1st of a year ago. So we haven't even known each other a year right now. Wow. <laughs> right. Once we met, then we became friends, and we began to communicate by phone. Mm -hmm. So you came out, out here with the art? To, I to came it. out with the art. It was the last thing I wanted to do, because I had been on one plane previous. My husband loved planes and knew a lot about them, and Steve's a pilot. Yeah, he flies <laughs> but his own plane. it was very hard for me to fly, and there was a lot of talk on the websites about how travel was so hard alone after grief. But there was something, I just had to come. I had to get on that plane and come. And when I got here, my room number of the hotel that Steve put us up at, the artists who were there, was my anniversary date with Rob, 11-19. Wow. So. Wow. <laughs> I was like, 
quite a sign. It was a huge sign. Quite a I sign. I mean, I was so stressed and scared, and then I saw that room number, and I just lit up. I was like, you know, wow. it was such a sign. It was such a sign. Wow. I'd like to say just at this point that so much magic happened. Magic was the best way to describe it. Kathy's connection to me, the things she did were magic. And Ron was doing it too. It was as if it was impossible to happen. It was a sleight of hand. It was a trick, mm -hmm. but it was real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was what was happening. And, and after it, that, when it's real like that and it's magic, though, it almost feels surreal, right? Yes. Because Bill and I came together in a serendipitous way through the universe that I just happened to walk into his shop one day to place some flyers I was going to do a seminar and the first thing he ever said to me was you make me vibrate <laughs> so you know sometimes when the universe steps in and takes over or your loved ones on the other side and it just so happens that both of our fathers are named Lee and we both had a strong connection and we actually feel like maybe our dad's we're sick and tired of us picking out badly. <laughs> made, it, uh, made it happen, right? <laughs> so the first time you laid eyes on each other, and you you're, you you own a portfolio picture framing down in, in Old Town Scottsdale, right? Where is that? Um, it's downtown, just in the near Fifth Avenue. Oh, right down in that that right. lovely artsy area. So Old you, town, yeah. yeah. So you you and you've been there for a while in Old Town with your forty seven years. Yeah. That'd be wild. <laughs> and so and and I mean you know all kinds of artists and you, I mean you you're 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 really well known as, as it's been fun. Yeah, and so you're putting this thing together and here she sends this picture and you're what was it like when you first laid eyes on each other? Well. I was having a bit of a time with it. I knew something was happening from the moment I saw her, even when I saw the painting. Um, Kathy had sort of disappeared for a while, and I was beginning to, to feel feelings which were disturbing to me, and I became very upset. I mean, I was in anguish that Kathy was pushing me away, mm -hmm. that she was telling me to move on. I don't know what was happening, but I was very upset. For two weeks, I was in very, very big depression and sorrow. And somebody said to me, and I think it might have been you, <laughs> 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 that, you know, you can love more than one person. That that doesn't mean that she's going away. And my grief counselor, who was, who was and still is with hospice, and I still see her occasionally, she's a most wonderful person. Help me. Help me through that. And I knew that something was happening. And from that moment forward, when she left after that show, I knew something was happening. But when she came by on New Year's on her way home from Christmas, seeing her parents in Connecticut, I said, well, why don't you stop, stay with us? for the night for New Year's before you go back because she had to come through Phoenix to head to Maui anyway. And it was my first holiday. Right. So you went home to your parents? Mm -hmm. And then I was going to be alone for New Year's. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. So she spent a couple days at my house with my sister and I and my grandkids who just went nuts over her. <laughs> How many grandkids do you have? I had four down the street. And you were blessed three times. You have triplets, right? Triplets, there, mm -hmm. and I have two wonderful granddaughters in Norfolk, Virginia, mm -hmm. and so yes, very. My fortunate. grandkids. I remember, you know, the, the the grandkids were part of your, you know, kind of trying to keep moving forward because you would share with me, you know, I've got to, got to try to stay stay alive, to my, stay yeah. alive for someone other than yourself. Mm -hmm. I would have been quite content to die. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is is that I believed in something on the other side. Kathy was leaving me no doubt that there was something on the other side. I just needed to get there while she was still close. Mm -hmm. But I was never going to kill myself, although I wished I could have had the nerve to do it right away. But, you know, first comes wish for death, then comes I'm okay to go. Mm -hmm. Finally, I want to get the most out of my life while I'm here. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And that's what they want from the other side. They want you of course. to get the most out of your life. Wouldn't you, you they want that want for you someone to be, yourself? Yeah, they don't want you to be a victim to their loss. They, they are upset when those thoughts come through you. They understand it. And do you know how real that is? That when you <clears throat> feel anguish over your loss, they can't even get through. That's right. They have a real hard time because it's hard to get through your anguish. That's right. And when you, and, and this happened to me in my fifth year, that I said, I'm okay. I can do this. I can live by myself. I can make a life for myself. I love her, but I am not going to end. And when I let go and I realized that I was no longer Steve and Kathy, I was Steve. Mm -hmm. When that happened was when she physically touched me when I actually felt her body pressing against me and I felt tear on my cheek and I could feel the pressure of her face on the side of my face and I felt wet even though when I touched myself it was dry but I felt it and I felt like is she sad because she was leaving what was you know all kinds of things will go through your head of course. but what she was just doing was saying I'm here it's okay and she let me do that and she did that twice mm -hmm. But it wasn't until I could let go of the anguish before she could get in the door. It's, it, it, that is so awesome to tell people because it's something that, being a medium, <laughs> it, it's hard work because, you know, people have all these expectations. They're, they're just grasping for anything that you say, you know. And, and when you try to explain to people, Steve, that your grief, that anguish of your grief, that, that raw difficult grief is is in the way it, it's almost like you're insulting them it, it's very hard to try to explain that to somebody you just did a beautiful job and I so appreciate that because there are people that that don't understand well how come my sister can hear my mother and I can't and I was closer to my mother than my sister I hear that a lot you know as well maybe because you were so close to your mother that you can't hear and your sister has a different level of, of energy around it, so it's easier for mom to get in over there than it is to get in, you know, that kind of thing. So it's a really, it's uh, it's great that you that you shared that. It really has to do, I think, with who you are and who you were together and who you were individually. Because for me, I could see Ron when I close my eyes at night, when I find that I had my little spot in my bed and that I didn't go work and that spot in my bed and that's all there was for the whole time. But when I closed my eyes, I could see his eyes and I could see the expressions in his eyes and it was always what I had. I didn't have a lot of few words here and there. He'd always tell me, it's all okay. That was the main phrase he would always say to me mm -hmm. um, when I would talk to him about Steve and how that was developing. It was always, it's all okay. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, whatever you do is okay. And that's, I think, the message that they're trying to to give all of us is that it's, all it's okay. okay. It's That's everything's right. okay. Whichever way, whatever path you choose, whatever direction you go in, it's what's meant to be and it's all that, okay. That is absolutely perfect. Because I say to people, you know, what's the worst that can happen? People say, well, I could die. And I say, and so? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so? It's all going to be okay eventually. It all ends up being okay. And it's with that strong sense of it's all being okay that you can move forward and have the guts to move forward and have the ability to find the emotional courage again, to live again, to be free of fear, to be able to make movement. I know I know Kathy um, because I've spoken to Kathy many times over the years, but I think I only spoke to Ron once, so I don't know Ron, but he feels to me like a generous human being. And that's what you've got in this man too, that there must be some similarities between he and Ron and you and Kathy. There's a lot of similarities and there's a lot of differences. Big time, <laughs> mm -hmm. Big time on both counts. Mm -hmm. yep. And the differences are good though. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, they have to be. They, the differences have to be. You know Correct. what I mean? But I'm talking about core values are similar. Oh, I'm talking yeah. about at your core, the mm -hmm. integrity, the honesty, the graciousness, the gratitude, the, you know, the, the, the sense of understanding spirit. I mean, you know, the, all that, that, you know, being good parents, good people, you know, that core stuff is, yeah. is similar yeah. To, yeah. To, both, to both of you. So you're bringing Maui Pasta yes. here to our valley. Tell us a little bit about Maui Pasta. Yes. 
So it was our dream. We started in 2012 in Maui, and we finally got the restaurant up and going, takeout restaurant up and going in um, May, and it was the following February that he passed. He got sick in December, and so it was very difficult. It was very, it's very difficult there. It's very expensive there. There's not a lot of properties, and we had a lot of landlord problems, and I did everything, right? Everything I possibly do to keep the business going there. In the meantime, Steve had become my best friend and support system to help me just survive my 16 hour days and how was I going to make it work. And we didn't know. We knew we were in love and we knew we wanted to be together, but I'm in Maui and he's in Scottsdale and how the heck, there was no, there was no path. You know, there was no path and we had to just believe it would open up and it did. It did. It did. Electrically, you, you, you might as well tell the story. <laughs> My, the um, a difficult landlord situation, but our electrical panel at Maui Pasta in Maui caught on fire. Huh. Like, okay, the universe is saying <laughs> it's hot here. Let's go. <laughs> well, we don't know who did it. We don't it know if it was Ron, Kathy or Ron. Kathy. She's very good with electricity. <laughs> That's Perhaps wonderful. they work together because this is a little bit more high voltage. <laughs> <laughs> and she was mostly the 12 volt uh -huh. master. And it was just a domino effect where all of a sudden we had a path to bringing Maui Pasta here and completing our dream here in mm -hmm. Scottsdale rather than on Maui, mm -hmm. which, um, which is what we're doing. So we're very close within the next couple of months. We're just finalizing on a lease space in Scottsdale and um, hoping that's all gonna work out and then we'll be open within a month or two. And what is Maui Pasta exactly? Maui Pasta is, a, a, the dream, our dream was always for it to be a factory cafe. Mm -hmm. So you walk in and you can actually see your food being made. You can see the pasta being made right there. The sauces are all, everything is fresh, no processed ingredients. Mm -hmm. We're gonna fly in the herbs from Maui mm -hmm. so that all of the herbs will be grown in the Maui dirt, right? Mm -hmm. And very, um, wonderful flavors mm -hmm. and we're going to have takeout and we're gonna we're talking about making it into a little wine bar as well so we're gonna have takeout That's in a to little cafe and all of my friends yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I can't wait that <laughs> sounds great <laughs> so it's gonna be a little cafe where you sit so very nice and, or take home very very nice it's very exciting that's exciting it's very that's exciting. exciting now you have a daughter I have yes I have a 22 year old daughter just graduated college it was my goal to get her through college and I did. So she's she's actually living in my house on Maui right now. How is she? She is. She got a film degree, so she's doing some film work out there. Oh, how awesome. Yeah, yeah. And Tell her we have a couple of people here she should meet. Some yeah. good friends that are in the film industry. Awesome. Absolutely. Yes. And my therapist told me, you will have grand... When I was feeling so depressed and suicidal, but you'll have grandchildren soon. And I'm like... And then all of a sudden... I have six. And you have grandchildren. <laughs> oh, and it's so much fun because she loves to read them stories. Yes. I and they are so enchanted with her. It's fun because they loved me, but now they've got her. Now going to Grandpa's house is better than ever. Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> because she teaches them how to make pizza from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> so is suicidal ideation? part of the grief process? You both said a suicidal, or at least I thought that mm. I would want to jump off the planet. Is that? Kind of wish that I could die to the point where only something would happen. I did not have the nerve to do it. And secondly, I felt bad to do that to my children, to my grandchildren. Oh yeah. And so for those first few weeks, that got me through it. It was behind me at that point. Mm -hmm. But I was still very sad, very, very sad. But what I'm hearing you both saying is those kinds of thoughts come in grief. Well, do they, they do. do. It's like you've lost, a, you've lost the person that was your everything, what's left to go on for. Right. And it's really hard to find a way to do that. And so those thoughts do creep in. My family was all back east. I was alone 5,000 miles away from them. They're living Someone's without me, what are, you know, like, what am I doing here? What am mm -hmm. I doing here on this planet anymore? Like, okay, that was good. I'm ready to go mm -hmm. kind of thing. And you have to really fight to find a way to find your, if I, understand 
the bigger picture, to want to go on and fully live your life and, you know, mm -hmm. find your purpose and meaning in the rest of your life. So you guys got married two months ago. Yes, two months and two days. Two months and two days, so, right? Mm -hmm. On a beach in Maui. Is that what you did? That was we that did. Day? Mm -hmm. And it was divine. It was almost... It was the sweetest, most wonderful thing, and we had such a thing with the rain, with the clouds, <laughs> that didn't rain us out, that just brought such an atmosphere and a spiritual thing of Ron and Kathy there, because there is a big Maui connection with the four of us. Mm -hmm. It was nice, mm -hmm. and it was very simple. Her daughter was there, so she did some filming Nice. And it was just us. Just the three of us. Us and a, the Reverend Alika, <laughs> who was Hawaiian Japanese, and he was very, very nice. It was it couldn't have been more sweet and beautiful. It was perfect. So how did all the kids handle this? Well, uh, the truth is is that my oldest son kind of got his feelings hurt because he wasn't invited. And he was back in Virginia. But we weren't inviting anyone. And so he felt kind of like a loss of his dad. Mm -hmm. And I remember when my dad got married after my mom died, I felt the same way. So I understood what he was feeling. My other son, my younger son, who works with me and lives just down the street with his four kids and his wife, were very, very happy because they knew me. And my granddaughter even said to me, my first oldest of the triplets said, Grandpa, I'm so happy that you're marrying Patty because you've been so lonely. Aww. And she's like seven. <laughs> and I'm just absolutely going, well, that's really dear. Out of the mouths of babes, <laughs> But right? I didn't know that you knew I was lonely. <laughs> the truth of the matter is I wasn't lonely. That I, I mean, I miss Kathy, but I wasn't lonely. If anything, this was the last thing I wanted. And when these feelings started happening for Patty, I actually was upset because why am I having to give Kathy up? Why, why is this happening to me? Why am I feeling feelings? I had just finished this book, the, you know, Grief Through the Eyes of Men, and in it I said, I will never marry again. <laughs> that I, I'm a done deal and I can live my life alone I have done it for seven years, I can live my life, and I'll be okay. I don't need something else. Mm -hmm. And then that book came out in November of last year, I was already toast, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but isn't that interesting though, I think truly, that when you do feel like you're done, so to speak, like you feel set in your life, that's when the divine right thing can happen. It's people who are desperately looking for someone else that get into trouble. Do you know what I mean? Like, that marry for the wrong reasons. You guys didn't have that desperate looking right. for somebody else. It was coordinated for you. you it know? was, but given that I met Steve seven months after. Yeah, that was a little right? different for you. It, it, for me, and my family were, were all wonderful. Because honestly, I, I met and married Ron very quickly too. Did you? Um, but they were all wonderful with it, but it was very, very hard for me to tell anyone, everybody in Maui who had banded together to help me and donated money to keep my business going and save the business for Ron, like, sorry, I'm gonna marry somebody else a year later, right? It, mm -hmm. it was like, how could I possibly explain the depth of this and the relationship with Ron and Kathy and the four of us? You can't to the society, and to society, you know, um, you know, running off and getting hitched again, how much did I, you know, all of that stuff starts to play societally and in, into your culture. And so I I had to really meditate on that and, and come to peace with that and embrace it mm -hmm. and not care because this is my life and there's an important message That's we right. want to get right. out. That's there, right. it, we want to get out this message that this podcast is about or this mm -hmm. webcast is about right. because it's, it's so powerful and it's so... Um, important and life-changing. Have you guys time. thought about doing some blogging on it on yeah. your own and doing you some... You want to write a book, you know? actually. Well, we, we intend to write a book. 
but we've been because our our life is an odyssey. Mm -hmm. It's an adventure, and I'm a fatalist by religion. <laughs> I believe that everything happens, making that happen, making that happen. And if all things hadn't been the way they were, we would have never met. Mm -hmm. Everything happened for a reason. Now I don't know the reason, but I don't have to know. Mm -hmm. I just know that. Every step of my life seems to have been taking me where I am today. And no way could I discount Kathy and all of this whole thing. Of course. It was so... <laughs> and, uh, wow. you know, and Kathy gave me Ron's name before you gave me Ron's name, correct? Correct. Yeah. So from woman to woman, I got an interesting question for you. Okay. You're moving into the house, or you've moved into the house yes. that he once had with Kathy. Yes. And Kathy was an artist, as Dee was an artist, and there must be still some of her artwork and some things there. What does that feel like for you as you're nesting with your, you know, new relationship, and how does that work for you? Is it good? Is it hard? Is it both? It's both, for sure. It is, and there was a period of time um, I had to certainly gather all of Ron's things way before I would probably have normally if I had stayed in that house. Mm -hmm. So that was a whole process. But the same thing was going on at, at our house here. In other words, when I moved, there's a lot of things that we needed to kind of pack up of Kathy's. And it was a very um, powerful and spiritual and beautiful process. And it was also, and, and Steve has given me some of Kathy's things and I embrace wearing them and I'm also a little shy about wearing them you know or whatever they are whether it's a piece of jewelry or a, a piece of clothing and but it, it honors her and I feel good about wearing it but I also worry about him at the same time like he's going to see something on me that was Kathy's that you know so there's a lot of dynamics that are going on right now and we're right in the middle of it because I've only moved here a little over a month ago, right? Oh, because wow, we had yeah. a period of time where we got married and then I finished my move and I came here. Right, right. So we're still in that kind of adjustment period and it's all about communication and mm -hmm. keeping our dialogue open and not, because I tend to get quiet when I get emotional and so I have to learn to open up and, and communicate. But it is, it's, it's strange living in a house that I haven't set up and haven't, yeah, yeah. you know, that's all a, of that. I mean, because yeah. that's, that's a woman thing. That's why I wanted to ask you. And, yeah. You know, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you, that how open and sharing you've been. Because I, I had that perception of you when I met you that you had some shyness. Like, and I mean, you know, we yeah. were meeting under, you know, in my office, yeah, 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 the people were talking from the other side. So, but, you know, it's just really been nice to get to know you tonight. Mm -hmm. Because, I, you know, I've spent time with him, and I, I, I've known him a little bit, you know, and I just think that it's just really nice to see who you are and your perspective of this has been really, really very helpful. And I do think that it was a little bit different for you than for Steve, because I do think he had a longer period of time to process than you did, and it was kind of jumped on you quicker than than he, you know, that the whole situation, you know, that the, the, that your loved ones on the other side sprung it on you a little quickly there, you know, might have been a little different for you. I was driving months, like maybe two months, if two months, driving down the street going, oh my God, driving from work to home, because it's the only thing I did. And I was like, how can I, how can I possibly 